Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how you can add layers inside your scenes, inside your songs in Camelot Pro. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as I still have a huge percentage of uh, viewings from viewers which are not subscribed. So that will help a lot. Thank you. So we are inside Camelot Pro and um, what I'm going to do is to click on the plus sign. Um, I have the demo set list selected. So I click on the plus sign and I create a song from scratch. Let's call it song one. Okay. As you know, you can edit the name and there and also the name of the scene. Why not? Let's call it um, scene number one. And why not? Let's create also another scene. So scene number two and let's click proceed. Now, if you double click on, on one of the scene, it will move you directly into the layer selection, as you can see here at the bottom left. Now, in this screen, what you can see is um, two, two options up here under the scene layer. One is to edit. And if you click on it, you can actually edit the name of the scene. But you can also click and hold and move layers uh, um, after rack or set list. So you can change the orders of those elements. But for now, let's leave those as they are. Let's click on the plus sign and it will give you the option to create and add a layer, which you can do that from scratch or you can do it through uh, pasting a something that you previously, uh, for example, created. In this case, let's create it from scratch. And let's name it layer number one. Okay, so as you can see, now you have a layer with this purple color inside scene number one. And indeed, if you go to the next scene, you can see there is no layer. So let's go back to the previous one. You can see is receiving from natural session one. You can maximize the layer. So click on that. And as you can see here, it will show you a screen where you have a keyboard down here and you can choose the range for that um, uh, layer to respond to. So for example, you can use this arrow here. You can see this upper key range changing and also this arrow here, you can see the uh, lower part of the range changing in this way. And it would respond only to these uh, range. And you can do the same through these vertical lines for velocity. So you can reduce as um, the response to velocity, as you can see here. But um, let's leave those uh, as default, like so. Of course, you can click again on these two arrows to go back to the previous view. When you have added a layer, you have the ability to click on this symbol here. When you click on it, it will uh, um, collapse the view. You can click on it again to expand the view. If you click on the layer, you have access to additional property for the layer where you can change the name here. You can see the MIDI input, which are available now, and you have option to change the name, remove from default, replace in all layers or from all layers. You can also show all the devices, um, including the one which I've disabled. Okay. And you can see also the audio output where you can disable it. And you can also change the pan here left to right. And double click to go back to the default selection. Then here at the bottom, you have a selection for meeting, setting and routine. Here you can set, set your profile from legacy mode, mode or MPE mode. You can have filters which I will show you in one of the more advanced tutorials. You can transpose and do some octave shift, and you can also enable advanced MIDI channel routing or routing uh, between the input channel and the output channel. But for now, let's leave as um, things as per default. The other thing you can do here is you can click on this symbol and you can change where that layer belongs to. So for example, let's say I move it to song rack, as you can see here on the left side of the screen, that that layer has moved from the scene layers to the song rack. But for now, let's move it back to the scene layer. So let's click done. If you click here on the three dots, you have access to the MIDI input, which we have already seen. And let's click outside. You have access to MIDI settings as well, which we have already seen. 
you have access to MIDI monitor. This is where you can monitor MIDI messages, which I will show you in another tutorial. And to exit this view, click on the X, on the X here. You can also um, see the audio output, which I've already shown you. And you can edit it. And if you edit it from here, what you see is similar screen to the one you've seen before, where you can reorganize things, but you also have access to changing the color of the layer, which can come handy. Finally, you can also copy, make that layer template or delete the layer. Next here, we have a plus sign, um, which I will show you in a moment. Then we have a mute button and also solo button, and then we have the output level. Okay, so let's maximize this view. And now let's click on the plus sign there. Um, in this case, it gives me the option to add an item, which can be an instrument, an insert effect, a MIDI programs, or connectors between layers, which I will show you in an advanced tutorial. Now, let's uh, um, click on instruments, and you have two choices here. One is hardware, and you can go by different labels. For example, um, under Roland, you have a lot of different hardware, you, which are already mapped, which is really nice. Or, for simplicity, you can go for a, an, a UV3 plugin, as I'm using these inside uh, an iPad. So I click on it and I choose uh, the first one on the list, which is Animug Z. So if you click now on the keyboard, you will hear sound. You can adjust the output volume, like so. You can again mute it and solo it. And you can maximize this view, which will give you access to standard parameter of that AUV3 unit, like in this case, the orbit time sinks etc etc so let's minimize that the other thing you can do as well is click on the title there this will give you access to the list of all the presets for animug and additionally you can go to additional midi settings and routing you find here that um, the filters first of all are different okay but also you have item input channel as well and the other ones meeting channel routing are the same as we have seen before Finally, here, apart from searching the preset, you can also click on this icon up here, and this will open up, which you can maximize that AUV3 unit. So to further work with it, click on the exit, of course, to leave the screen, and when you finish, click on Done. So as you can see here, you can still change uh, uh, the left and right pan, okay? And um, you can also add additional UV free units or other items. So you can still go in and select, for example, Bliss Alpha, like so, and you find now that both will respond to the keyboard. And of course, if you click on Bliss Alpha there, and then on the icon, you can see go inside Bliss Alpha, which is a fantastic synth. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you for today. In one of the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use multiple layers and how you can use and create split. And also uh, after that, we will proceed with the creation of connectors and bridges between different layers, which uh, you will find quite interesting. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.